This is uh, Ahmed Suleiman and welcome to my presentation on Study Unit 5, Building a Robot. In Building a Robot, Basic Engineering Design Processes called EDP must be followed. And if you look at the diagram, it shows you the basic steps that must be followed. For instance, you must ask to identify the need and constraints. Like for instance, do you have a problem? Is there a need to do something? Then once you've done that, you've identified your problem, then you do your research, and then you imagine the possible solutions. Then you start doing the planning by selecting a promising solution. Then you do a prototype, so you create the robot, and then you test and evaluate the prototype. And then, of course, you do your improvements. So, step one, identify the problem or the opportunity. So, the problem in, in my example is, is to create a sustainable autonomous robot that can move and perform tasks outdoors. The opportunity is to utilize renewable energy source to power the robot. Step number two, now you must define the specifications. In my example, size and weight is very important because remember, I want to sustain uh, uh, energy. So the size and weight, the robot should be small and lightweight for easy mobility. Energy sources will be solar panels to charge the batteries. And of course, a small wind turbine. A motor is installed as a backup system. Mobility, four-wheel base with the ability to navigate rough terrain. And the task, of course, the robot should be capable of basic tasks like collecting data or performing environmental monitoring. The next step will be the research and, of course, to brainstorm with your team. Research different types of lighted materials for the construction of the chassis. And the frame, example, dowling sticks in my example, plastic straws, etc. Then, of course, a sturdy solar panels, batteries and wind turbine and motors suitable for the robot size and power needs. And, of course, we need to brainstorm ideas for the robot's design and features. Then the next step is the conceptual design. So we design a basic frame using the dowling sticks with a space for instruments, solar panels on top, motor and a wind turbine on a platform. Plan for a four-wheel drive system with appropriate motors. Determine the placement of sensors for navigation and of course data selection. So what we have here are the the, the materials for the chassis, so I have my dowling sticks cut into a certain size, and of course I have my upright panels, and I of course also got in grey colour the base. Then for the so-called movable parts, that will be for the wheel, or the wheels to turn, the, the, the chains I'm going to use, and the cocks I'm going to use, and the plastic straw. All lightweight material. Then here we have the wind turbine, the solar panel, the, the motor, and of course the measuring instruments, which I'm going to use, or the motor or the robot is going to use. Then, of course, when we get to the de detailed design, we can, of course, we can use a Tinkercad to do the drawings of the robot. And, of course, we can use Gearsbot to design the robot's movement or the path. Like the, the one I'm going to show you in the next slide is the, the, the block coding for the robot to move in a square, for instance. Then we select the specific solar panels, wind turbine, and motor needed. Design the electrical system to integrate the energy sources and the power, the robots and motor sensors. Right, what I have here is the basic coding or the block coding of the movement of your robot. And what I've done here is I've coded 
for the robot to move in a square. But of course, it all depends on your, depends on your terrain and where and how you want your robot to move. Then, of course, the prototype construction. Now, I'm going to assemble the prototype using dowling sticks and plastic straws, ensuring that the frame is sturdy and the components fit properly. I'm going to install the solar panels on the top surface, install the motor and mechanism that support the motor, set up the wind turbine on the race platform, and integrate the motors, the wheels, and the sensors. So I've used my glue gun and glued the four corners and they form the chassis of my robot. So the next step now is to glue these two parts onto the chassis. like that and like that next is I'm going to use this plastic straw and glue it on top of the axle so that the back wheels can ride on it or through it like that like that so next I am going to glue now the two side panels to the chassis like that like that let right, me just get it correctly here so it's going to go like that the two side panels like that so I need some glue there to go in there and also glue there and there like that right just some more glue to secure it glue just to secure it and to make it sturdy and strong right and then of course the same on the other side with this one so this one will then also come on this side then like that like that Right, so that is the next step. Like that. Okay. Some glue there. And glue there. We can go in sturdy. And some glue there. some more glue to make it more stronger it's more secure more secure
and that should then give you the side panels fixed to the chassis. The next step was then is to secure the motor to this back piece here and then attach it to the upright frames of the chassis. It has to be secured tightly because there's going to be a movement and this is going to create a, a move effect on the robot. So next to be fitted is going to be the gears as you can see here with the chain and it goes over there and secured into the upright frame and then on the inside I'm going to secure this little piece of, uh, uh, of the gears in there because it is going to connect with whatever is going to drive the wheels right so there is my first if you can have a quick look there so this is exactly what I've done now to my robot so the gears are all in place next now is to fit the front wheels through the upright chassis like that then of course this little cog to go in there through there because it's going to connect with this mechanism here right, if I can just get it right so the next step now is to secure this wheel with some support there and to this part here because this chain is going to come over there now we have some adjustments I will do the adjustments just now but that is how it's going to be driven by the, by the and then of course I need to also connect this other chain there it will go over there and it will then drive the front wheels right so now I've managed to also secure the this chain with the front wheel cock to drive the front wheels so let me just give it a, a quick try and see does it work let me see ah it's moving good let's try again ah it's working so the mechanism is working good and even reverse and forward and reverse right next is going to be the focus is now going to be on the wind driven part of have already done now the motorized part now I'm going to use the wind driven part which I'm going to fix at the back of my so of my robot so I'm first going to secure this platform right there okay let's put some glue right so the next thing to do now is to glue this platform to the back of the robot because it is going to support the solar charging panel as well as the wind driven mechanism of the robot so we first glue that to the back like that and right, that should do it make sure it is secured just double sure and on that side right so once that is done 
I'm going to install this platform which will support the solar panel. So we'll go in there, up there, and down here, like that. So that will be the support for the so, so the solar panel will then lie on top there because it needs to be exposed to the sun to be able to charge the batteries. Right, so now I'm going to secure the platform at the back of the robot to the that platform at the back so it's secured nicely so that the fan can go in there. Right. So the fan can go in there and then as you can see then the fan is also now connected to the robot. So as you can see the solar panels are already charging the battery to the fan which will then drive the robot forward. Can put it on, and there we have movement of the robot forward. Oh, that is in the reverse, and the robot moving. Of course, testing and evaluation. So, the test the robot's mobility in different terrains to ensure it can move effectively. Monitor the energy generation from both the solar panels and the wind turbine. Evaluate the robot's ability to perform basic tasks. Then, of course, you need to go back and if there's any challenges, you need to redesign and refinement of your project. You have to adjust based on the test results, such as optimizing the energy efficiency and improving mobility. Enhance the stability of the frame and the placement of the component. Then the final step, of course, is testing and deployment. So conduct an extensive testing to ensure the robot meets the spe specified requirements. Deploy the robot in its intended environment, such as outdoor monitoring or data collecting tasks. Maintenance and optimization. Establish a maintenance schedule to keep the robot in good working condition. Continuously optimize its performance and energy efficiency based on the real world usage data. Throughout the engineering design process, it is important to document each step, collaborate with team members if applicable, and consider safety precautions for both constructions and operation of the robot. This sustainable robot can contribute to various applications from environmental monitoring to disaster response. And of course, here I have two pictures of the, my final product of my robot.